Hey, my name is Jan Kettel Röth and I will in this video tell about focal map algebra functions. Most of the content of the video is taken from chapter 10 and 13 in the book GIS Tools to Understand the World. Now, map algebra operation dates back to 1990 when Dana Tomlin introduced this concept and she grouped them into four families, the local, focal, zonal and global map algebra function, classified by their scope or the extent of their uh, processing. So we've been through already local function, which work on a cell by cell function. And today's lecture is about focal map algebra function where it is the neighborhood of a pixel which is then used to calculate a new value for the output pixel. So neighborhood operation is another name of focal map algebra function and the basis here is the focal cell, the dark marked cell here and its surrounding cells and very often is a three by three cell which is used so the first order neighborhood if you like are used to generate a new value for the pixel value focal map algebra function may be divided into two types we have focal function based on a movable window so then this three by three window goes through the entire raster and assess all pixel positions with their neighbors. Or we can have so-called block-based focal functions. So first we need to maybe define neighborhood and here GIS is very flexible. So the default and which is very often used is what is shown here a tree by tree window. So a syntax for this is by using an operator called neighborhood rectangle where the cell dimensions is 3 by 3 and the unit set here is the cell. So 3 cells in this direction and 3 cells in, in this direction defines then the neighborhood. So this is also often called the first order neighborhood, so the, the 8 neighbor of a pixel. But this rectangle can be of any form and you can uh, set this up with the width and height options. So for instance here we have a rectangle which is 5 in width and 3 in height. But you can also have circles defined by a, a radius. You can have an analysis so you are not concerning the pixels being most close to the uh, kernel pixel but those which are in some kind of outer radius uh, around the kernel pixel. Or you can have only a specific sector in a particular direction, uh, a so-called VEG. So these are typically the kinds of neighborhoods you are using in a focal based map algebra, but very often it is the tree by tree window which is used. So here's an example of a focal statistic. We have an input raster here and a resulting raster here. So what's happening is that it calculates from each input cell location. So starting upper uh, left, assessing this pixel here and its neighborhood. Since this is on the edge, we don't have uh, eight neighbor here, but we have three neighbors. And based on this neighbor, a new value is assigned to the same output pixel position. For this example, it is the sum operator which is used. So here it is summing the pixels values in the frame here and write the sum to the output pixel position. So the sum of these pixels values are four. So further down in the raster, we have nine pixels indeed and summing all these gives the value 15 and the value 15 is then written to the output cell location here. So this goes from cell to cell until the entire raster is processed. Now focal statistics is actually one way to handle missing values and we see here in this example indeed a missing value here. 
So here it has been using the sum to assign a value here, but if you are going to replace a no data value with a, a, a value, it is more common than to take the mean or the median of the surrounding pixels. So like here, it's taking then the sum, in this case, of these eight surrounding pixels. We need to ignore no data to be allowed to calculate a new value for this one. Now, so there is a moving window then, which is used in focal statistics operation. So here is then showing three steps in this process of um, calculating focal statistics. The um, statistical function mean is used. And then for each cell position, a new value is written to the resulting raster. So starting up the left, and it moves from pixel to pixel, first row, second row, etc., until the entire raster is processed. Now we also have block-based focal function, and then we don't have the window, but we have defined blocks. And these also are sizable, and uh, here in this example we use the 3 by 3 cell as also the block sizes here. So here we have that this block of 3 by 3 pixels are being processed and the output is written to then the resulting raster here. So if a block statistics with the, op the option maximum is used, it then for each of the block assess among these nine pixel values, what are the maximum, what is the maximum value and 8 is then the maximum, which is then written to all of the output cells in this block. And then it continues to the next block and the next block, etc. So in the next blocks, here we have 6 as maximum, and here we have 3 as maximum. Now here we have ignored cells with missing values, so we are able to also assess the value here. So here we have 2 as maximum. Now, a similar function for this is the aggregation, which you may need to do if you, for instance, have satellite imagery having different spatial resolution. So if you have a 10 by 10 meter uh, raster, which you want to combine with a 30 by 30 meter resolution, you may need to aggregate the 10 by 10 to a resolution of 30 by 30, which is then obtained by using an aggregate uh, function like this. And then somehow you need to have a rule of what to do with all the pixel values. This could be the mean, the maximum, the sum, etc. And in this example, it shows then the result of the maximum operator. So again, the maximum here is eight. So, but here we don't have nine pixels anymore because we have aggregated the pixels. So here we only have one pixel. So we have um, merge, if you like, nine pixels into one pixel here. That's what aggregation does. So we've been to the block-based spatial aggregation. Some other very common neighborhood function is filtering and the generation of terrain parameters. So filtering is very common within remote sensing. If you have an input raster image, this is an old spot image of Trondheim, just to uh, illustrate how a low pass and a high pass filter would, um, would uh, smooth or add enhance the input image. Now a low pass filter typically take out exceptional features, high values, po element pockets of unusual value and generate a much smoother uh, image. A high pass is almost doing the opposite. It's isolate then edges or linear features and very often done within geology to, to find liniments in the landscape for instance. So here for this urban image typically we highlight the streets in Trondheim. These are then the linear feature you see here. Now the terrain operators slope is of course a very common one 
if you want for instance to isolate all slopes which are steeper than 30 degrees because they may be more prone to landslides. So then the input uh, raster is a digital elevation model. So here we have uh, a valley here and another valley here and we have some high grounds here but we don't really not often see the steepness of the slope so well. So this is typically then symbolized from red via yellow to dark uh, red where the red color is then the steepest terrain here. And here we have a area where it's up to 80 degrees steepness. So the units for terrain slope it may either be in degrees or in percentage. I normally tend to use the degrees to avoid that the numbers get very very high for very steep slopes. So for a vertical slope it is 90 degrees which is then the maximum of it. So slope is then technically then the relationship with the vertical distance by the horizontal distance or the tangents of the, the uh, um, angle here. Another common terrain operator is the aspect or the direction of the steepest descent. We may want to know this for urban planning application, for instance, to know which are the landscapes which are facing south, because people may want to have their buildings set up there. So the aspect then, it generates an output thruster, also using a digital elevation model as input, and the aspect then is colored red if the aspect or the terrain is facing north it's light blue is if it's facing south it's yellow if it's facing east and west if it's facing um, west and if it's totally flat it has a gray color and the value minus one and for the rest it starts with zero direction north and then it goes clockwise back to north which is 360 degrees again. Direction of flow is another focal operation because it's like slope it assess the neighborhood of a pixel to see where would surface water for instance flow. If it's heavy rain and the soil is either impermeable or saturated already so everything which falls down will um, flow as surface water where will this water go this can be uh, mapped using the direction of flow so here we identify the maximum descent and if that happens to be several cells in the same neighborhood the neighborhood is then extended until you have one solution and then the, this direction of steepest descent is written as the output value. Um, there are more sophisticated uh, algorithms for doing this, but here I only present the most basic one, the so-called D8, where we assess eight possible directions. So each pixel has eight first order neighbor. So we identify which of these eight has the steepest descent and which of these eight directions will then surface water flow. Would it flow to the east, then the pixel value is one. If it flows to south, the pixel value is four, etc. So having an input digital elevation model, um, for each cell, it then assess the steepest descent to each of its neighbor and for this, this it is the south eastern direction so the steepest descent is like this and the value 2 is written to the output position and this is repeated for all of the cells and then we will know by assessing the entire raster that the pull point for this input raster is about here because all cells then is then directing to this output 
cell location. Thank you for listening. That was all about focal map algebra functions.